Warm welcome for 68th AICOG TV and I am pleased to have with me one of the dynamic personality in the field of obstetrics and gynecology and that's Professor Dr. Krishnindu Gupta. Thank you very much sir for being here on AICOG TV. Sir is a professor and unit head at uh, Vivekananda Institute of Medical Sciences, Calcutta. He is a chairperson of uh, Indian College of Obstetrics and Gynecology for 16-17. He has been a past president of uh, Bengal Obstetrics and Gynecology Society for uh, the year 2013 to 14, and he has been a uh, vice president of Foxy in 2011 to 2012. Sir is going to enlighten us on the topic of hirsutism in adolescence. So, uh, sir, let me begin with the first question: How common is this hirsutism? Well, hirsutism is uh, the instance is about five to ten percent in the reproductive age group, and. Uh, what we are finding in our clinical practice is that day by day it's kind of increasing and that's because of obviously no prizes for guessing it's because of the lifestyle uh, a modification that uh, has changed from the past to the present of uh, you know the kind of incidence of uh, the polycystic ovarian syndrome being seen rising amongst the adolescents and uh, there are lots of other causes of course we can talk about an ovarian cause which is polycystic uh, ovarian syndrome there are tumors which can give rise to it there are adrenal causes there are pituitary causes there are other ectopic secretion of uh, other hormones idiopathic causes uh, women who take medication so uh, there are other causes but what we what we're seeing is because of this, this terrible shift of diet and lack of exercise and you know basically because of high bmi we are having all these problems. There are more of the androgens that are being uh, secreted, I guess, uh, and 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 we are having this excessive hair growth, uh, which we are seeing in the females in the adolescents. Uh, very well said. But uh, in terms of causative factors, then uh, when it comes to a hirsutism, I feel that it would be more of a cosmetic problem to begin with for a young girl. Uh, uh, so uh, when do we? How do we decide the line of the treatment? Or do we go into the extensive investigation profile to find out the hormonal or yes, the endocrine see, disturbance? See, there is obviously investigation, but the most important thing is counselling. Because see, a young girl who comes to you, most of us gynecologists see the uh, women, let's say, at the age of, the girls, let's say, at the age of 13, 14. Prior to that, they go to the paediatricians. It's only when all these other things, uh, you know, turn up that they bring, you know, the mother or the parents get, you know, really worried and come and bring them to us. So counseling, showing a lot of concern, psychological support, empathy is very, 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 very important. Of course, investigations are important and we really want to make sure that the um, uh, pelvic, I mean, the ultrasound is very important. We cannot, uh, uh, you know, do a low, low I mean, we, we can do a lower abdominal ultrasound and uh, do the uh, testosterone levels, the androgen levels, as we say free androgen index is also very important but there are a whole lot of gamut of investigation but if you start doing investigations uh, you know in a young girl they get very scared you can do that in a much you know a little more elderly adolescent or someone who's in the 20s but it's you know but in the adolescents they you know you have more of counseling you have to more you know you have to tell them to you know it's the same thing what i said about lifestyle modification from the from the good to the bad here you have to do it from the bad to the good, to the good. right so that's important and then we can bring in uh, the medical therapy which is the mainstay of therapy in the in the youngsters right. so that takes us to the question of how do we manage this uh, patient yes as I said the first thing is um, counseling okay psychological support empathy I've already said that then comes the medical line of therapy now there are a whole lot of um, uh, you know medication that's available and the first thing what we do is uh, what we can definitely think of is uh, giving them combined oral contraceptive pills because basically what it does it, it brings down the androgen index and uh, and that's that itself is uh, is uh, is a big bonus again in the uh, contraceptive pills we have both estrogen and progesterone so we have to select the correct progestogen which will actually uh, help help the uh, help the young girl so now the young girls they want the problem with the young girls is they want everything fast they don't want to wait and so that's why counseling is very important that you have to tell them from day one that we're going to give them a long-term therapy let's say between uh, you know six to uh, six months to 18 months Absolutely. so they have to be compliant. compliant and then you have of course what we call as the dermatocosmetic therapy now they all want to immediately go in for a laser they want to go in for waxing they want to go in for shaving and stuff like that we always tell them and that's where the counseling is important so we tell them that you have to first start the medical therapy let the levels of the hormones come down and therefore 
the once the levels of the hormone come down, then you get a better response when you do uh, the dermatocosmetic therapy. So, so you know, it, it, the, I think that, that takes us to the combination therapy. Which exactly. Plays so as you know, so, the, so there's no single agent, single agent. which is going to work brilliantly. And uh, what's also important is whenever we think of starting medication in young girls, we have to follow them up very, very, uh, you know, uh, cleverly and very, very uh, carefully because, yeah. you know, they're, they're in the growing phase. Because we as gynecologists, as primary care physicians or women, when a young girl comes to us, we always kind of uh, look at them as future mothers, yeah. right? We, uh, so we have to be very, very gentle with our therapy and not get too much aggressive, you know, add a lot of anti-androgens right in the beginning, which is done. Uh, a lot of the... Um, you know, n you know, non gynecologists they prefer immediate action with, with, uh, with other medication, which we are very, you know, kind of careful in giving. So we have to wait and watch about uh, about the therapy, yes, and re, you know, reevaluate. Now we we may give a medication. Compliance is very important. So we may give a medication which we see that after six months may not be working that well. So we have to reevaluate the type of medication that we are giving. Bring in, bring in a kind of combination therapy and then uh, kind of uh, you know uh, help help the lady so it's basically a very individualization but what we want to do is start with a low dose pill that's very important the high dose pills which we call more than 50 micrograms of ethylestradiol we don't use anymore it's all sub 50 so we start with a 35 ethanol uh, estradiol pill with let's say uh, progestogen called cyproterone acetate then we can you know kind of okay after giving 6 months of cyproterone we do a liver function because liver function is an important test and then we may even kind of bring down the dose of estrogen, change the progesterone to let's say desogesterol, so or drospirinone, which are anti-androgens, right? So we have to kind of uh, weigh the oh, pros nice and cons, and yeah, it's it's a you know we have to kind of a fine balance, yeah. which is very important. Absolutely. So we can sum up that uh, the hirsutism is on rise, maybe because of the rising incidence of PCOS as well in our in our young adolescent girls. Uh, there could be some other reasons for hirsutism of course, apart of from course, PCOS. Of course. Because the we, someone who comes, co yeah. sorry to interrupt, but then uh, you know suddenly you, someone who comes and we just can't brand them that you're not, you're you know you're eating all the bad stuff. Right, no, I right, mean, it right. could be other causes. Other well. causes so we have to well, yeah. we have to uh, kind of I investigate thoroughly to rule out underlying causes before we start medical medical therapy. Because someone with a tumor, you know, I mean, with an uh, with with a huge ovarian tumor, a certainly you know Leydig cell tumor or a rhinoblastoma. So all these things have to be removed. We are not going to uh, gain any benefit by giving the medication. And we have to uh, judiciously treat them with a combination therapy yeah. uh, that will take us, uh, that will give us the good results in Absolutely. such patients. Absolutely. So would we there would be a can there be a one-liner message that you would like to give to the young gynecologist on the treatment of hirsutism? The objective of this interview is that those who have missed your lecture in AICOG. They could get some uh, message on the topic of hirsutism. Well, I, I only will say one thing. When a young, young girl comes to you with hirsutism, be compassionate, give them good psychological support, show empathy, counsel the parents because they need a lot of counseling. And before you start any therapy, investigate them thoroughly. Be judicious in selecting your medication and follow-up is very, very, very important. Thank you very much, sir. Thanks a lot for sharing those wonderful views on this topic. Thank you for and the opportunity and the pleasure. Thank you, sir.